What is going on guys? We are back playing some more surviving with mechanism and today guys We're gonna be messing around with the production of tritium and deuterium now if you don't know what these are both used for They're both put into the fusion reactor and you can also combine them to make what is called DT fuel Which gets its name because you're combining deuterium and tritium together and that can also be inserted into the fusion reactor But you don't actually need to do that if you'd like to you can combine them using the chemical infuser But I've actually been told it's better to just just insert deuterium and tritium separated into it instead of actually combining them in the chemical infuser and then inserting that. So that's getting a little bit ahead of things because we haven't actually produced it yet and we will probably cover combining them in the chemical infuser and setting them in there uh, some other episode but today we're just going to be going over the production of both of these. Now they both do require different setups but they're actually relatively cheap. So there is a fair bit that we need to craft and it took forever for me to actually craft all the upgrades that we need for this but other than that it's really not that bad so uh, we're going to be starting out with crafting a bunch of pumps which are going to be right here and then along with those we're going to be crafting a couple extra upgrades now we're going to be crafting what are called filter upgrades and we can make those first and if you don't know what these do they allow the pumps to get you heavy water now heavy water is what you're going to be putting in to an electrolytic separator so that you can get out the deuterium and that's really all that you have to do. Now the filter upgrades only go uh, in stacks of one solely because you're only gonna be inserting one so that they get you the heavy water. And you can see if you just go over it and hold shift, a filter that separates heavy water from regular water. So we're gonna be making four pumps along with that. And I actually forgot we already have the stuff for the pumps in our inventory. So we can quickly throw that in there. And it's actually relatively cheap to get this setup done. Obviously the pumps are gonna use a fair bit of power, uh, especially when you throw all the upgrades in there. But We'll leave the upgrades in here until we're ready to take them out just because uh, they do take up a fair bit of space. Now we're just going to be crafting another electrolytic separator real quick. And of course, that's where we're going to be putting the heavy water. Now, I don't know if I mentioned this, but the reason we have four electric pumps is because if you've got four electric pumps running, uh, they will be able to continuously run one electrolytic separator, assuming they're all upgraded and they all have enough power to continuously run, which I don't expect to happen at least right now. But eventually, I think it should be able to happen for us. Now, a lot of the stuff that we have sitting over in this portion of the um, chest is just stuff that is miscellaneous for today's build. So we've got the water buckets because, of course, we are going to need to make an infinite pool below the electric pumps. And I think we should be fortunate in that even when you're making heavy water, you should still be able to uh, not actually suck up the water and you just have to have the water sitting below the pump. Um, I know that was a big issue before when I had seen non-sanity making the uh, fusion reactor and trying to get all the deuterium was that he had a hard time keeping water uh, for the pumps to actually suck up. So hopefully we don't have to deal with that, but uh, we also have uh, basic mechanical pipes and then we've got the enriched alloy for upgrading these on the spot when we need to do that. We've got an advanced gas tank, which we're going to be using to collect the tritium. And then we've got the quantum entangler porter for power. And the last thing that we're crafting is what we need to turn the lithium into tritium. And so all we have to do really is once we get the lithium, put it into a solar neutron activator. So that's what we've got right here. Now, this is actually a little bit more annoying to craft in the pumps. It does require elite control circuits, which means you need a fair bit of reinforced alloy. It also means you need some HDPE sheets. So if you don't actually have a setup to get the HDPE pellets to get the sheets, that's a little bit unfortunate, but you do need to go and do that. But the nice thing is the solar neutron activator does not actually require any power because it uses solar power, which is great. Uh, it makes it a little bit easier to set this up, but it also means we have to set it up outside. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. And now we can grab out as many of these upgrades as we can hold in our inventory. And I don't think there's any way for us to kind of empty any more space aside from dumping just some random stuff into these chests. That's still not going to be enough space. We are one short. Okay, we're going to dump some of this. We'll just dump the cobble in here, even though that's not the right chest. Now we should have everything and we should be good to go to start this, uh, except for the fact that I do need to run down there and grab out our uh, lithium when I get the chance. But we'll set up the heavy water into the electrolytic separator first, and then we'll do the uh, tritium production after that. So we're going to be setting up the water production in this portion over here. And the main reason we're doing all of this outside is just because I want to keep it together for the most part, uh, just because it kind of is all related to each other. And we do need to have the solar neutron activator outside, like I said. So it's going to be going all over here. So we've got the four pumps coming out right here. And I'm trying to think of the best way to actually set these up over here. Uh, so it is easy to wire. So I think we probably want to set them up 
something along the lines of this right here in a square assuming they don't suck all the water out and then we just want to i don't know if this is on rotate um oh yay police that is so phenomenal sorry if you guys can hear that i'm sure you can uh, but okay so there we go we've got the pumps ready to go and they should all be rotated correctly so we can just run the wires along the outside and then we can easily pump all of the heavy water out the top so we can hook up the mechanical pipes up here and there we go so relatively easy to hook up uh and then we can just put the electrolytic separator somewhere like right over here yeah that's actually a good spot because then it'll run together with the power and we should be okay to pump it in i think yeah so we can bring this over here pump it in and we may have to rotate it depending on where we want to pull things out from but uh yeah we should be okay to put it in there and we can start throwing these upgrades in so we're going to want energy upgrades in all of these because this is going to take a lot of energy and the whole reason behind this uh is actually for producing energy so we want to make it as effective as possible so let's get in can we access this one it's kind of an inconvenient spot maybe we can get it from over here no uh there we go okay so this one needs an energy upgrade and then we can go back through and throw in speed upgrades for these speed for all of them and get this one uh, that one still what why why are the energy upgrades did i set this on something i feel like i must have set this on something that i don't want to i don't know why these won't go in uh Okay, so that one's being a little bit weird. All of these are working for them going in there. Let's see if this pump over here works. Yeah, so this one worked fine. Speed upgrades go in there. And this one, did the energy the energy upgrades didn't go in. Okay, you know what? Forget about that pump for a little bit. We'll just ignore that one for the time being. Uh, so now this is all ready to go. All we have to do is just go down here, break these blocks, and get our water going. Okay, we'll fill that in right there i don't really care if it looks good or not and we will throw our water down now i'll put the power in at the very end just because there's no reason to have it in there before that until the whole setup is ready to go fill this in with dirt and we can actually start wiring these up right now so i've got the advanced universal cable just to make sure these are getting as much power as they possibly can we'll have to upgrade it even more eventually but for now this should be good to power everything in this whole setup all we have to do is connect them uh we can connect them back over here so break through this and we'll have a little bit more than enough okay so there we go now all we have to do is throw down our quantum entanglo porter and hook it up to our main frequency so i guess we can hook it up right over here and gotta set this to gunpowder set it there we could probably do general but we'll set it to that and all we want is energy and we want all of these to be outputs so there we go now the one problem i have with these is they sometimes get a little bit glitchy so uh power is not actually coming through this right now even though this is definitely supposed to have power so let's try setting it to general uh i still don't think that would have power coming through it they're all on output and it's on auto eject so like i said they sometimes get a little bit buggy so i think i'm gonna hop off camera and let's just check one last one to see if this one works yeah, so we're not actually getting power through any of these. So I'm going to hop off camera and try and finagle around with this a little bit and get it to work. And then we will jump back. Okay, guys, so we are back and everything is working. As you can see, we are pumping heavy water out of the pumps. I have the filter upgrades in there, all the upgrades in them, actually. And we are actually now producing the deuterium that we want. We also are producing oxygen. So eventually I'm going to store that and use it for other stuff. But uh, we're pretty much just producing heavy water and that's getting turned into exactly what we want. So we're all good to go on the deuterium setup. Uh, it was a little bit annoying and I do have one complaint related to mechanism. I actually have a lot of complaints related to mechanism as awesome of a mod as it is. All right, sorry about that. Uh, I just didn't want to have you guys listen to the police car. But uh, my main complaint is really the quantum entanglement porters because that is a huge part of being able to get rid of all the lag that goes on at your base is put things elsewhere. But for some ungodly reason, these things do not work 
at all half the time. So, you know, this was all properly hooked up. There was power being input to one of them. The same frequency power was being output, yet no power was actually coming out. Yet I logged out, logged back in, and all of a sudden it starts working. So I don't really know what's up with that. Uh, maybe it's fixed in the newest version because I have yet to download uh, the newest version. But um, yeah, that's my one complaint. So it makes it a little bit hard to work with, but hopefully eventually that will be fixed. So now that we've got the deuterium going, we need to get the tritium going. So I went and off camera, I grabbed my advanced gas tank that is filled with lithium gas, of course. Now, if you don't remember, we made lithium when we needed to make the induction cell uh, for the induction matrix because you need to make the lithium dust. So we made the lithium dust in the chemical crystallizer, which comes from lithium gas, which then comes from lithium liquid, which comes from a thermal evaporation plant that has brine being put into it. So it's a long process to get to lithium uh, that you need the lithium gas because you put uh, the regular lithium that's coming out of the thermal evaporation plant into a rotary condensentrator and you set it to decondensentrate, which will produce lithium gas from the lithium liquid. Now, unfortunately, you can't just input the lithium liquid into the solar neutron activator. It has to be a gas and then it'll output the tritium gas that you want. So uh, it is a lot of steps to actually get there, but luckily we don't need to worry about using power or anything along those lines for this. We just put it in and we are good to go. So we're gonna throw this down in an area where it can actually get sun. So somewhere along the lines of like right over here, and I'm actually gonna put it up one because we're gonna be inputting the gas in the bottom of it. Uh, so we'll put down the advanced gas tank right there. And I think I have, oh man, I didn't even bring the uh, stuff to pipe the gas out with me. So we gotta run back inside and grab that, get some nice FPS drops because of looking at all the multi-block structures. And where is our pressurized tube? There we go. So the output straight into a tank will be perfectly fine, but uh, we do need to pull it out using this. So pressurized tube into this, and you can see it's already starting to work. We are already getting tritium. The lithium gas has filled it up inside, and it's really just that simple. So we can throw some upgrades in here. We'll do speed first because it really doesn't suck up any energy. And we actually, I'm completely spacing when I made these energy upgrades. They can't go in there because it doesn't use any energy. So. They might have been able to if you were thinking about the solar energy, like as if this were a solar panel powering itself internally, but that's not how it looks at it. It'll pretty much just produce a ton of tritium. So now we got to throw this advanced gas tank down in front and that'll get us the tritium gas. Um, but you can see now that, oh, have we pulled all of it out of this? Yeah, so we have fully pulled that out. We are now at a fair bit of tritium gas. We'd need a ton more, we'd need constant production. But for today, just for the sake of an example, showing you guys how it actually works, that is how you produce tritium. And now we have the deuterium production going on right over here, which is again, halted because it's full. So if I really wanted to, I could just dump excess on or just dump the oxygen. Um, oh wait, you know, what am I doing? There's no reason to dump the oxygen because the deuterium is full. I'm completely spacing out. Um, but yeah, so that's how you're going to produce both of those. Now, if you did want to make DT fuel, uh, I guess I can cover it briefly now just because a lot of people might actually want to produce DT fuel right when they produce the deuterium and tritium they need. So to make DT fuel, which is looks like a cool purple, which would make sense for combining this red with, I believe this is like light blue. Um, but the way that you would make this is just use a chemical infuser and you put both of these in there and then you would get out DT fuel. And like I mentioned earlier, it's pretty simple to think of considering the name is D for deuterium and then uh, dash T for tritium. So that's where it gets its name from. Um, but like I said earlier, again, I've also heard that it is more effective to just pump both of these into a fusion reactor separately instead of combining them outside of it and then pumping them in. Uh, not exactly sure why we will get into that when we actually make the fusion reactor, which should be in about an episode or two. It's really not actually that expensive to make, which is pretty darn awesome. But I think that's where we're going to call it for today, guys. Hopefully you found the video informative. If you enjoyed it in any way or actually learned something from it, please feel free to give it a like. because It does help me out a lot. And I will talk to you guys later.